and my fellow man in showing that the command stated in verse 22 has become a directive mandated to me. See, I'm spending all this time on verse 22 because it is very difficult for Christians to realize we forget so easily how we're supposed to live. And that's why, oh my God, we forget so easy about how we're supposed to live that the first time Christ is coming to our life, we start acting like before we got saved. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of fall back on that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I asked, I asked Vern, he was helping me paint yesterday, and he said, hey man, if somebody mess with me, you know, I got to get them, and I got to do this and that. And I said, all right, mm -hmm. all right. He said, well, John, I got to defend myself. I said, but do you have to beat the person down? Do you have to stump them? Do you have to bring all that? When they say, I give, I give. And then he said, oh, man, you, you ain't looking at it right. I said, no, because I was working on this message. And that's why I love to talk with Christians or professing Christians. Now, a non-Christian, I expect them to beat you down and stomp you. And, and do you put a bullet in your head and walk away and spit on you. Because they don't care. But I know that the wrath of God is going to get them. I don't have to get them. God has already told me. Oh, I'm going to get you. And listen, you may be able to fight against a human being, but you are not able to fight against God. Mm -hmm. And let me warn you Christians right now, and you folk right now, and those viewing through the YouTube, don't start a fight with God that you can't finish. Because God got a way of touching you that you never recover. You never recover. I won't get into the detail, but a man said to me, after God touched me, now I know he's God. And whenever I hear you preach about him, I am listening and paying very close attention. And that is a good thing. I would also say this to you, and this is good to say. It is not, mm, here it is. Let me come to this. Yes, there's a quote. It is not enough to hear the word. We must do it. Many people have missed have the mistaken idea that hearing a good sermon or a Bible study is what makes them grow and gets God's blessing. It is not the hearing, but the doing that brings the blessing. See, it's not the hearing it. It's the doing it. You may say, oh, I go to Pastor John's house, and he really preaches dynamic Bible. He re oh, well, good for you. You heard it. Now, what you going to do on Monday when you're out there? Now you got the test coming up on Tuesday. Uh, see, like that young lady, she said in my college class, <laughs> wait till she get the first quiz. <laughs> see, she can't say, I know Pastor John, he's my pastor, and, and I know I'm going to get an A in it. Ah, she going to get the quiz, and she's not going to get no help from me. And if she didn't study, she will fail the quiz. And I'll send them to Gaston. <laughs> right in front of the class and give it to her because you're on your own. Don't be here. Let's do it. Now, no, wait a minute. Here's the end of this statement. Too many Christians mark their Bibles, but their Bible never marks them. Put that down. They're marking their Bibles, aren't they? Filling in the yellow lines. But that Bible don't mark them. They're living on another plane altogether. Altogether foolishness. Fooling around out there slinging cocaine in the name of the Lord. Would you sell a bag to Jesus? Mm. Well, see, yeah, it is. well, you know, brother, I got to do my thing. Yeah, right. Fooling around with that boy who got pregnant, right? Oh, I can't let my parents know. Wait a minute. The Bible says thou shalt not kill. Oh, but my teacher told me she's going to abort it. And then it won't bring no shame to the family. That's a baby. That's a human being. Yeah. You and that boy had a love moment. You loved it the moment the baby was being put in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, he just kissing you. Oh, 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 oh. And now the baby's growing. Mm -hmm. And now you want to go get the baby ripped out because he didn't told you. Uh, 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 what? <laughs> now I'm going to read that line again. And I like that line. I'm glad I put that in there. Too many Christians mark their Bibles. But the Bible's never marked them. See, you can't be going by this Margaret uh, uh, Swinger, or whatever her name is. Uh, Sanger. Uh, uh, Sanger, yeah, mm -hmm. that family planning mess. Right. 
abortion. No, you had a love moment. That baby is growing in the hatch. Had a baby. Work for it. Take care of it. Mm -hmm. If you think you're spiritual because you hear the word of God, then you are kidding yourself. James, the writer, is saying you got to do what you hear. See, Mark, that's what I see. They knew that verse was coming at the vet. That's why they got rid of me because they said, oh, no. No, we can't take this because we're not going to do this. Most folk in church don't want to hear this. And then there's this mistake. Look what it says at the bottom of that verse. Deceiving your own selves. Mm -hmm. By the logical fallacy, the Greek implies <coughs> that the mere hearing is all that is needed in some people's lives. Mm -hmm. In some people's lives, all they need to do is hear it. But that's a logical, you know, impracticality. Once you hear it, it makes you something else. This is what makes you an intelligent being. Not only can you hear something, but now you can define what that means. And that leads you to walk in a certain way. See, if you're a parent, you're going to tell your child what to do. The child doesn't necessarily know why you're telling them to do that. If the child doesn't do that, you have to enforce it, don't you? Because, and then there's going to be a penalty laid if they don't do it. Well, when they become adults... When they grow up and they say, man, I got to do that. I'm my own person. Mm -hmm. Like that fool preacher said, you be you. You be you. <laughs> yeah, right. You be you. Yeah, you be you. Jails are full of people that was yeah. being themselves. Mm -hmm. I hate orange. I mean, not as a color, but to <laughs> just walk around in. <laughs> I mean, I'm just walking around in some orange coveralls, you know, you know sandals on my feet, you know, eating a bologna sandwich with no mayonnaise. What's it? This is lunch. What? You be you. No. I'm telling you, my friends. I'm telling you. You better pay attention. Now, where was I? Yes. Keep in mind, keep in mind that this is the opposite of proving yourselves. If you deceive yourselves, Deceiving yourself is the opposite of proving yourself. Mm -hmm. God wants you to prove yourself, not to deceive yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is why James uses this language. Because that's what a lot of Christians are doing. They are deceiving themselves instead of proving themselves. And that's why James says, prove yourself that you're a Christian. Don't deceive yourself thinking you are taking that disposition. That's why when I was talking with this guy over the phone, and he told me he was going to get his M16 and do that, I, I said, now, this, this man cannot be a Christian. I don't care what anybody does to me. I don't want to kill them. Nor do you. You don't want to kill them. Now, I'm going to tell you why you don't want to kill anybody. Listen, Christians, and don't ever forget this. Because when you leave this planet and you die... And you kill another human being and God created that life and did not tell you to play God to take that life. Then you have to suffer the damnation and the separation from God with that guilt for the rest of eternity. And guess whose face you're going to see every second of your eternity. That face of that life that you took and the anxiety and the anguish of you killing it. Now, for a Christian to say, I'll kill somebody, see, you can't be saved. You can't. That's why, if anything, if I'm driving in my car and hit a person in the car, the first thing that I'm going to do is, is, is say, oh, please help him. Please don't let that, why? I don't even want it on my conscience, even mm -hmm. if it was an accident. Mm -hmm. Because when you see a person die like that, mm -hmm. I was with my wife when she died in that house. But there's no guilty conscience. Because I was talking with her about the very Lord that we both love. Mm -hmm. But you choking somebody and they take their last mm -hmm. and you say, there I did. And you got to live with that for the rest of your life. You don't want to go into eternity with that.